city, and he goes to the field. And here is the question, Moshe, what do you mean we are city people? If we feel comfortable meeting the king only in the field, when the king was in the palace throughout the year, we felt we have no relationship with him. Just let's picture it this way. You have a rabbi, you have a teacher, you have a professor. You had. When they come into the classroom dressed with their, you know, tie or formal clothing or kapota or tie and Shabbos and suit and all that, there's a little distance that's created between the mekablim and the teacher. And guess what? It needs to be that way. If we don't have that, we have chaos. The teacher, if the teacher is the proper teacher, is on a different level, meaning to say uh, the person is involved in, in, in more scholarly things and, and, and hopefully more nicer midos and on and on. Nevertheless, this great teacher and genius decides, I, I, I really, I'm, not, I'm really not bonding. I've told you many times, the way to, the way to have more success with teenagers is you got to bond with them. And bonding means, you know, eating pizza together, bowling together, strolling together, schmoozing together, hanging out together, becoming friends. And that's what we need. There's not enough of this today in the school system, in the yeshiva system, in the girls' school Friends, there's rabbis, there's teachers, there's disciplinarians, but we don't have friends. I don't mean friends between each other, that there should be a mashpia, <clears throat> a, madr a madrich, a supervisor who acts as a friend to the student. And by doing that, it breaks the, the, the seriousness, the stereotype. So what happened when the king went out to the field... He broke the stereotype because we were used to thinking of a king with horns, a king in a, in a palace, a king that's totally removed from us. We have no association to the king. And here we see that the king can have a good time. He can go into the field. He can kibbutz. He can schmooze. And guess what? He really is like one of us in a way. In a way, he's really one of us. But then, so we, from our perspective, we also feel good. But when he goes back, meaning when he goes to Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, and he's back to being a king, if we ex received him properly in the field, then we can also have a relationship with him, with him now in his palace. Why? Because the truth is that we are also city people. We are also neshama people. We are not driven by our bodily needs. We are driven by our soul needs. However, during the year it was difficult to materialize our soul needs because of the hoo-ha, the hoo-ha of the world, all the issues disturbances, and now we have peace. So now, after this cleansing, coming not with conditions, it's weekdays, it's not Shabbos, it's not Yom Tov, and Hashem says, I'm going to give you, during these days, something very special, and it's called the Yud Gimel Midos Harachamim. The 13 attributes of mercy not as they are during the day. Today in the morning, we say, The 13 attributes. No, 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 no. That's a daily request for material matter and important. But we're talking here about the Neshama. The month of Elul is about focusing on Neshama. You have to knock this through your head, Chevre. This month, it's not about asking for more Gashmias, even, of course, we need Gashmias to live, but the focus is Ruchnias. This is the month of Ruchnias. Ask, working on Ruchnias. Like I told you, it says, Asponech Hashem Avakish. I'm gonna, he's going to say it soon. 
Tov the Melech says in Tov Hashem Ma'iri, you say it twice a day now, I search, I want your Pneumius. If you really want something, do you just make a phone call or a WhatsApp or an email and, a, uh, and you just go to sleep or you pursue it? You pursue it. It has to be a Bikush. A real Bikush. A real Bikush is deep depth. As Ponecho Hashem Avakish. Since I'm coming from, I'm looking for the Pnimi is. The inner aspect of Yiddishkeit, of Torah, of Hasidus, I'm going to pursue it. And then, oh, and what gives me that koyach? So, I need a koyach. I mean, I've been, I've been in a daze for all these months. Hashem says, I'm going to reveal to the world and to you 13 attributes of mercy that are sp- special for Elul. And they will help you focus on Ruchmias. And that is why we say, Ani doidi v'doidi li. The doidi li, and God is to me, is also part of the acronym, the Rosh Tevis, Ani doidi doidi li, equaling uh, acronym Elul. Because in El, as much as we say the, it, 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 it begins with us, the initiation is through us, it's Arusa de la Tata, the arousal from us, from below, nevertheless, we need help. We need, we need help. In other words, you have to go out to the field to greet the king, right? But what gives you the intelligence to go out to the field? Sometimes it's, it's, it's your wife saying, go, go there, make, you know, make an attempt, go there. Sometimes it's a lead, sometimes it's um, a friend. But there's always a trigger, you hear? There's always a trigger that is there to aid you. That trigger we call Isarut, we call that Yud Gimel Midas So let's now begin looking at this on page 14, Yud Dalit. The second paragraph, as he has it here, and also in the Torah. Ki hinek siv, it's written, Yoyer Hashem panav elecha. Hashem illuminates, his face illuminates to elecha to you. You know this is part of the birchas kaihanim that we say in Yom Tif. And there it's Yisrael, some say it every day, birchas kaihanim. Shehu inyin haores yud gimel midis. This is the emanation, the revelation of what we call the 13 attributes of God. Sheyia ponim b'ponim. Right here, Yoni, the Alter Rebbe teaches, what is the purpose of these 13 mitas harachamim? In Elul, it's not for my health and my wealth, etc., the Gashmias, but sheyi upon him upon him. You see, that's why Dalta Rebbe adds those words, sheyi upon him upon him. You understand? The focus of the Yudimil Sarachim during Elul is different than the focus of Yudimil Sarachim on every day. The focus is sheyi upon him upon him. We should have a face to face relationship, which means pnimius. Hainu sheyoy gilu pnimius ritzayni is borech. This means there should be a revelation of God's inner will, lemoker neshamas Yisrael, to the source of Jewish souls, to Jews. Al yidei sheyeikir pnimius ritzaynoi, a love yis borech, by us making our inner drive only for God, ledof keboi teklif to him, belev and nefesh, with heart and soul, may um kadaliba from the depths of the soul be mesidas nefesh with self sacrifice. So, in other words, when will the yud gimel midas harachamim be experienced to the pnimius? If we show pnimius, you know Moshe the Arizal writes that if a yid dedicates himself to a tzaddik and does it with mesidas nefesh. The tzaddik soul will be will be impregnated into that Jew's soul, and they'll be able to do things they never were able to do before. And if you wonder why this twenty-five-year-old Dushliach coming out of Crown Heights who didn't go to Harvard and Yale and Oxford, 
And he's able to rally around people and to put up the buildings. And, to, and, and all of a sudden, he's, you know, and he's, a, and he's a, a young kid. Because if he's dedicated to Hashem, vis-a-vis, in this case, the Tzadik, the Rebbe, the, you know, to do the Abish's work of Shlichas, the Tzadik's soul is impregnated in him. That's what it says in the Arizal. I didn't make that up. So when we're talking about having the Pneumius of Hashem, illuminate us, we have to, we have to be panemius towards Hashem. If we are a superficial, chitzonius and external, don't expect a panemius response. It's tit for tat. The, the rule, you get, you get what you pay for. You get what you invest in. How much you invest, that's what you get. And the same is true with children, and with business, and with every issue in life. There's no quick fixes. If you know anyone that thinks there's quick fixes, it's only temporary, because it's going to fade away. But what you invest with Koyach and Pneumius will come back to you in a Pneumius Dika way. And that's what he says. Yeah, continuing. And this emanation of godliness, he nimsheches meprinas keil. It comes from the name of God, Kale, right? Kale, Rachum Vachanum, Kale. Shehu Reishas Kola Yudgimul Midos, which is the first of the 13 attributes, Umbekoidon, Uviklaluson, their source and their generality. Now, there are different shitos, there are different opinions, which is the first of the 13 Midos. Some say it's Hashem Hashem. But the Alter Rebbe here is, 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 is following the opinion that the first of the 13 Midos is Kale. Kumesh as it says, Kale Hashem, Vayoyer Lonu. God, God, Vayoyer Lonu should illuminate us. Shubchines Oyrin Sov, Baruchu Atzmei Mamish. This means that God Himself, the infinite God, ain't Sov. Atzmo, he himself should illuminate us. Kumashi Kosov, Ki Hashem Elokecha, top of page 15, Tesvav. Eish Oich Lahu, for God, your God, is a burning, consuming fire. Perush, this means. Kemoy Lemarshal Zivayr Hashemesh, take for example, a ray of the sun, Hayoit Semino Eish Atzmo, that comes from the sun ball itself. Generally speaking, Yoni, is there a difference between the ray of the sun and the sun? No. So anthropomorphically speaking, the, the, the emanation coming from God's face Metaphorically speaking, to the Jewish people, the Chlalos Yisrael, who mepchinas kale comes from kale. So, Velda, what are we saying over here in simple English? That although kale, you hear, is a mida, right? It's one of the thirteen midas. So you would think that the mida is limited, right? Because a mida means what does the word mida mean? A measurement, Yoni. Mida is a measurement. Meaning it's measured to a specific aspect of godliness. So what does it mean that it's, if, if that's the case, this is what the Alter Rebbe is responding to without question, saying out the question, which I'm, which I'm sharing with you. So what are we saying? That, that Kale represents Primius if Kale is only a, a, a mida, a measured, a measurement, limited. That's why the Alter Rebbe gives us the mushal here of the ray of the sun from the sun. Is the ray of the sun, Yonisin, a ray? Yes. But we have the famous rule, which I'm sure you'll remember, Yonisin, or me'ain or The sun, the ray is me'ain, is similar to the source of the, of, of, of the, of the sun, of the light. Or me'ain or Please write that down or, and knock it into your head. The R, the reflection, is Mayain is similar to the Moor. And how is that? 
Tovel, how is our main Amor? The sun ball is so powerful, and that's why we can't handle it. We need a or. We need an emanation, a reflection. That's true. But the that's the how do we say it? that's the kamos, the quantity. That the quantity of light is much less than the quantity from where the light comes from. But as far as the quality is concerned, the ingredients of the light has the exact same ingredients as the source from where it comes, which is what? To make light. There's no difference in its objective. The only difference is how powerful it is. This amount or that amount. But as far as the tochen, the content, or in other words, the mahus, mahu, what it is, in its objective and ideology, it's the same. Or, me'en hamor. And that's what the Rebbe is saying here. Although it's kale, it's, the, it's already measured, but the toche of kale is pnimius. So therefore, when we, when we ask Hashem, and Hashem gives us the 13 attributes, beginning with kale, we know that in this kale, there is the same quality as God's essence. And that's why Kale is able to connect to the Pneumius of God, which is what we're looking for, the Pneumius. Yor Hashem Pono Velecha. Yes, Yonison. Does Kale live in Rachamim book? Kale is what? Oh, so again, that depends on if you begin with Hashem, Hashem being the first of the Midos. If Hashem and Hashem is the first and the second of the Midos, then Kale is Rachamim. But if here the Alter Rebbe says Kale is the first of the 13 Midos, so it would be Chesed. And look, he's going to talk about that soon. I'm glad you asked that, but wait a few minutes, okay? Let's continue. Yisrael. Moshe, Yisrael. What's Yisrael mean? Israel. Miloshin Sar Kale. Sar Kale means the master of Kale. So the word for, for a Jew, Yoni, Yisrael, the word itself is Sar Kale. The master of Kale. What about the Yud of the word Yisrael? This is a beautiful interpretation. Vahayud more al hasmodes hapaula. The Yud denotes the constant activity. It's not he was once Sar Kale. He is in the present sense, in the present tense, Sar Kale, the master of Kale. Kamoi. There's a verse, Kocha Yase Eev. So Job does. And it's a passage there. Right? So, in other words, it's not that it happened once, it's happening now. So the Yud, the Hebrew letter Yud, denotes present state. And, 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 and this, as it applies to our discussion of, Yis- of Kael, Shepchinas Kael. Husaru Moshe Bekirbay. What is Israel? One second, Yoni said that the Kale is a Sar, Yoni, is the master that d- dominates and rules the Jew. The real essence of the Jew is, is Kale. Yes, Yoni Yeah, and you indicate on continuous friends. Correct. Yes. Fight it. The high new she yes. What? Continuously being the master of of chaos. Correct. That's what we just said. Thank you. The high new next page she yes. Tezayin kechol bechol nefesh Yisrael. Dalte Rebbe says, well, hey, Velvel, where 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 do you where do you find the sarkel? 
I mean, uh, is this like, you know, Kab- Kabbalah? Show me, says the Alter Rebbe, I'll show you. Sheyesh bechol nefesh mi Yisro, avi. Every single yid has nitzutz elokus mamash, a ma, an actual spark of Hashem, hamecha yenaf sholikiz that sustains and enlivens his godly soul, umoshech betivoy, and it naturally um, gravitates lemaila above laor baor achayim to the light of life. Limser naf sheelav yisbarach. Why is it that a Jew is willing to give up his life for God? Because the Jew has a neshama, a nefesh elokis. And that nefesh elokis is animated by Yisrael Sarkeo. And it's continuous. And that's why the previous Rebbe, yes, Velvel, yes. Go ahead. Just a short question, perhaps I uh, got it wrong. So, uh, um, Kale is the essence of a Jew? Is, is it a it, yes. Kale? So in the case of, um, in the explanation of uh, Alter Rebbe, or what? Yeah, the Alter Rebbe, here he, he, he's talking about that the kale is the nitzutz of the nef of the, uh, the nitzutz, the spark, the Jewish spark, which we call the nefesh kiss. Yes, in this in this discussion, he's associating kale with nefesh kiss. Okay, okay. Yeah, that that's yeah. It, in other maimorim, it, do, it doesn't it doesn't use this term of kale. You understand? Oh, yeah. But because he's discussing I here, I okay, so. So, what's the could that I, I want to make? You know, you know, when we learn these words, you have to understand that how that every yid has an ashama. We all, that's something we always we always hear and understand. But this language is is unusual. And and and, however, since we're talking about avoid of elu, and when a when a yid looks at himself and he says, how can I do this? How can I do tshuva? It's, I, I, I have so many issues going on and, I, you know, and all that. It says the Alter Rebbe, you have Kale, Kale Hashem, the first, this month Hashem gives you access to access your Kale, your, your, your spark. And your spark is Yud, Yisrael, Yud Sar Kale. The kale controls and dominates you in a constant way as represented by the yud. And therefore, the fact that you gathered lots of dust and issues all these months makes no difference. Because the true essence of a yid didn't change. Just like the sunlight, the ray of the sun, didn't change in its quality and objective from the sun ball, from the source of the sun. It's only a quantitative difference, not a qualitative difference. And therefore, says the Frida Kerebe, he was standing and the bombs were flying in Warsaw, where he was in 1939 when the war broke out. And he was next to Yidin, he says, who didn't put Tfilin on and didn't keep Shabbos. They were far from religious observance. And they said, Shema Yisrael. Where did they, who told them? No one told them to say Shema Yisrael. They automatically said Shema Yisrael. It says the Friedrich Rebbe, this is because they have a Nitzu Tzeloki. Every year has a Nitzu Tzeloki. And when triggered, it wakes up. That's proof that it is Yud Sarkel. Not that it's God forbid, not there. You know, in, 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 in certain communities, they talk about a non-religious Jew as a goy. They call them goy. And it is so foreign to, to, to basic Judaism. Forget about Hasidic Judaism. But every yid is a yid. Even if that yid is, is far from it. Someone asked me yesterday a question. 
um, what's what do I say about the um, the uh, the situation where uh, Jews are 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 mamish doing things knowingly against Judaism, against Torah? Are you to have Avas Yisrael to them? So I said the Alter Rebbe already addressed it in chapter 32 in Tanya. And he says you love your soul and you hate their, their, the, 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 the act. The act is wrong. But the Neshama is pure. Oh, this is a big job. How do you separate the person from the behavior? Uh-huh. But why don't you look at yourself? And when you do something, when we do something wrong, we are able to somehow say, that's not the real me. The real me is good. The real me is, is holy, is connected. I just did a shtus. Ah, so about yourself, you're able to separate. But about the other one, you can't. That's hypocrisy. And what's the answer? The answer is, just as it's true for you, it's true for them. Is there din? Yes, there's din. There's law and order. But that doesn't take away from the essence. So this all is part of Yisrael. Says the Alter Rebbe here. Let's continue inside. Second line. This sensation of gravitating to Hashem with self-sacrifice transcends knowledge and rationale. Because if you approach God with wisdom and, and knowledge, and that's all, and that's all you use, you cannot comprehend this experience to completely be subservient and kind of make yourself ownerless to God, from everything for God. No, I can't. I'm limited. I'm not ready to jump into the fire. So if you use logic and say, you will come to a dead end and you won't be able to overcome. You want to overcome? You got to come from the Shema, from soul that goes beyond Seichel. Seichel can go only so far and we need to pursue logic and Seichel. But we have to pursue it in a way, Hillel, that Seichel, itself se- that Seichel itself says, I am limited, and what I need to do to, to, to accomplish, what needs to be accomplished, is faith. The leap of faith. And that's another thing that we're missing today. I see it, you know, with Shidduchim and everything. The leap of faith. You, you're not going to figure it all out. Anyone that thinks that they can figure it all out is, a, I'm sorry to say, a big fool. You're not going to figure it all out. Because Seichel is limited. You need to go beyond Seichel. Yes, yes, Hillel. No, I was, I was waiting for the next line. Oh, next line. V'zeu bonim atem l'ashem lokeichem. You are children to God your God. Ki bro kara davuahu. A child is the foot of the father. Which who is incorporated in the will of the Father without any rationale, just like a foot, that's subservient to the head, and the foot doesn't have any independent will. It goes wherever the head tells it to go. And this is the meaning. A no, your will for God's will. In order for a person to be illuminated with God's inner essence, you need to annul all of your own wills. You should have no other will except God. And this is very, very hard, my friends. Who, who is willing to be mevatel? It's, it's a life's journey. But the Alter Rebbe is saying like this, that the first thing before you think about implementation is, you have to understand it. 
And once you have to, and once you understand it, then you have to make a resolution, a decision. I want this. So the first thing he does is he built. He, he, he explains the the build up, the sarkel Yisrael. You're a yid. You're Yisrael. You have it within you. Then the next thing he says is, okay, if you have it within you, so give yourself over to God completely, completely, without conditions. Oh, that's very hard. I told you, why, right? Why do we have two days Rosh Hashanah and one day Yom Kippur? Rosh Hashanah is about submitting. Yom Kippur is about forgiveness. Forgiveness is, re- is easier than submission. The hardest thing is to submit. It's so hard to do it someone else's way. Right? Your wife's way, your employer's way, your rabbi's way. No! I have my own way of understanding. I'm not willing to give all myself, I, I, right? That takes two days. It takes a lot of 48 hours. Once you've done that, Yom Kippur is smooth sailing. It's smooth sailing because if a person can submit to Hashem and truly submit, <laughs> then basically, you know, you're going to do what God wants. So I'll, I'll bang here, and I'll, I'll bang, I won't bang, I will bang, I'll bang five times, ten times, twenty times. It's all semantics because the core essence has been created. You are my boss. The Avinu Malkeinu, the Avinu Malkeinu, Eilonu Melech Elo'ota, is where it's at. And that's why when, we, when we're going to say Avinu Malkeinu, focus on that. You don't need to, you know, people are rushing. I was telling someone over the shul this morning, rushing and rushing and davening and davening. Say one line and say it with kavona. I promise you it will be like you daven for four hours. But really say it with kavona. Think about it as it's in your life. And this is what the Alter Rebbe is saying here. So of course, if you only read Hillel, the last three, four lines over here, of giving batel um, ritzoinchem you know, you say, wait, well, I can't do that. That's why the Alter Rebbe preceded in the paragraph to tell us that we have something inside that makes it possible to experience this because it naturally g- gravitates. Dr. Rebbe's language earlier on, um, where is it over here? He says, Limshoch um, Be'atzmai. It, it, oh, the first line, the last two words on, 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 on page Tezayim, Umoshech Betivoy. The nefesh is its natural habitat, naturally, is like the, 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 the fire that jumps upward. Do we have to tell the fire, you innocent, I want you now to jump upward, and now jump to the left, and now jump to the right. It's automatic. The neshama has an automatic desire to be with God. You don't have to tell it anything. What you have to do is take away the blockages. And this is the message that we conclude with today is the blockages is what we have to get rid of this month. Elo is about getting the stuff out of the way. <laughs> get the stuff out of the way and you'll see the neshama will flow. Chassidim would always say, Chabad Lubavitch Chassidim would say, the Rebbe, the Tzaddik, will already know what he needs to do. And your connection to the tzaddik will be great if you just don't get in the way. Don't get in the way. That's the avoid of Chodesh Elul. To get out of the way and let Hashem, who put a neshama into us, do its tafkid, its job, which its job is, I'm ready to give myself over to Hashem. You know? And, and when we, we, we learn about these things and we think about it and we reflect, you got to reflect, this is not, again, this doesn't come from couch potato reading and, and pizza and falafel and, and, and ice cream and, and frankfurters. It doesn't happen. It comes from lots of work. And it's hard work. It's hard work. But that's why we're here. We're here to work hard. Otherwise, take a trip to the angels. Go there. But if you want to live, you want to live on earth, and you want to make a home for Hashem here, you have to know it's hard work. And even the successful person is always trying to make this deal and that deal. Everything is, is, is complicated. Everything is, is hard. 
But that's, that's what Hashem wants. Hashem says, I really like that. So embrace work. Embrace the, the struggle. That's, that's, that's one of the main Nekudas in the Tanya, the Alter Rebbe, is embrace the struggle. Now you ask a, a regular person, you say, I want to learn freely, no bothers, just let me learn an air-conditioned room. And my friend, if you don't learn where it, you don't understand the shot and the Tosvis, and you can't go to sleep because you don't understand that, that and you don't schwitz, then in your world of learning, you're not committed fully. You're not batel ritzayin choler ritzayinoi. Because you could go to sleep with not understanding what Tosva says. And for you, that's your work. The Rebbe, I just, they had a clip this past uh, uh, Matzah Shabbos, 1973 Purim, Chaim Potak shows up at the Fabrengen. His wife was from Crown Heights. Chaim Pot- I interviewed Chaim Potak. Chaim Potak's wife was a Crown Heights girl. And I think an Orthodox, from an Orthodox home. And Chaim himself came from an Orthodox. I think he was. He came. I don't know if he was late. Maybe late. He was. Uh, I don't know later at the end if he was fully Orthodox. But but he definitely came from Orthodox uh, Orthodoxy. I mean, he definitely belonged to JTS to the conservative movement. Um, whether he was a Shabbos in his own life, I don't know. Anyway, let's say let's give him the schus. It's El he was for his neshama. So the Rebbe, you got to you got to see this clip. It's online now. The Rebbe is talking about a writer. And the rabbi's talking about books. I, I, I really identify with him. The rabbi says that even if you write a good book and a person or two or three enjoy it and you feel, I've made my mark, says the rabbi, it's not enough. And, they, and then they zoom the camera in on Potek and you see he's like this. He takes his glasses off and he's looking at the rabbi and he's listening and he, he understood Yiddish, you know. And, and the rabbi is like demanding and the Rebbe says, it's not enough, because if God gave you a talent, you have to use the talent to inspire so many more people. And the Rebbe's like chopping away at everyone, but of course, he was probably the main reason why the Rebbe spoke about it, because the Rebbe knew that he was at the Fabrengen. And what does that say? It's the same idea. Here is a man who his book, The Chosen, was, was put into every public school. And in so many, I remember when I went to his house in Marion Station, Pennsylvania. That's where he lived, and I interviewed him there. It's an interesting story. One day I'll tell you how I got that interview. It was, it was not simple. I had to use a little chachma. <laughs> because it was right after the Rebbe passed away in Gimel Tammuz. And in Chabad, there was this whole controversy about Mashiach, the Rebbe, and all that. And he was aware of it. He was no, he was no fool. So he said to me initially, uh, I, I just... I, I, just leave me out of it. This is like nuts. Just leave me out of it. And I told him, I don't think this way. I don't believe this way. And, and you know, and I'm writing a book about the Rebbe. And it's after his passing. And it would be for his neshama. And a person like you is a universal Jewish leader. And on and on. So he says to me, let me think about it. You know, and usually, you know, what that means <laughs> no. <laughs> and so I'm saying, and, and he says, call me in a week. So I'm, during the week I'm saying, how am I going to get him to change his mind? Because I knew the answer would be no. Somehow someone told me that a brother of his named Shimon was very ill. Oh, I mean, he told me. He actually told me he can't think about it now because he he's dealing with his brother who's like dying and was very ill. And when I heard that, I said to myself during the week, I'm going to tell him that I, I, I will be masquerading him at the Ohel. I'll, I'll get his name to the... And, and, and on the other hand is, does he really care? I have, when, as soon as I told him that, not only did he answer my call within minutes, I left a message that I'm, I would like to mention his brother at the OL for Rufur Shlema. He answered his phone, and he sent me his name right away, and after that he said, I'll, inter- I'll give you the interview. Nice. Yeah. Nice story. Nice story. The nice things about both of you. <laughs> You have to, you know, you have to use your seichel a little bit, you know, sometime to understand the person and, and, and the midas adam. But, but what, what do I, why am I telling you what the Rebbe spoke yeah, about? And you know, it occurs to me, if you were at that talk of the, if you were at that talk of the Rebbe, uh, he was talking to you too. He, 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 I wasn't at the talk that year. 
I, I, but he, I heard it uh, for much of Shabbos, and I know about the Sikh, of course. No question about it. No question about it. And, and the point is, it's a, it's a talk. What I want to bring out is the idea of Avoida working. Here is a man who's accomplished so much, and his books are already all over, and, and, and you know, people are becoming aware of the Jewish people. And, and as I said, when I went to his house, I saw maybe 20, 25 tra- translations in all kinds of languages of, 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 his, of his book. And comes to the Baba Cherebbe, Purim, Tavshin Lama Gimel, 1973, and gives him a sense, and says it's not enough. That was our Rebbe. That was our Rebbe. You understand? So, Chevre, it's Chay Shell. It's Chay Shell. When we learn these things, it animates us. It gives us more Chayas to, to go. And today is the 8th of LA, which to help everyone should have a Ksiva Chsima Teva, a Gubukut Keben Shior, and we'll see everyone tomorrow. Zai Gezut. Bye bye. Rabbi, I'm going up north. I'm going up north a few days. Okay, enjoy, enjoy your time and, and drive safely. <laughs>